Hello again, hope everyone's doing well. Today's video is going to be hopefully the start of a series for me, which goes through the top 10 highest selling cards of the past week. Now for me, I'm only gonna be looking at the modern uh, draft or rookie cards and, and nothing else. I, I previously did a series eBay Expeditions a long time ago, and that went through all kinds of cards, just interesting sales that happened over the past week, but nothing ordered by sales price and that didn't really have any consistency to it. So I think this one will be a lot more useful to me and hopefully to you guys as well in tracking the values and seeing what prices cards are going for and almost more importantly, which cards are selling on a consistent basis because it's very important to also have that liquidity knowledge because then you know what cards are hot, what, what plays are hype and how the market's sitting in general. But without any further ado, I'm going to get into the list. And in number 10, we've got a random one to start off this series. And it is Sean Rusling's Platinum Draft Pick from 2005 Dynasty. So this is the same set that has the Buddy Franklin uh, Platinum Draft Pick. And that goes from anywhere from $500 to $1,000 at the moment. But obviously, Sean Rusling's not the same kind of name. This one really surprised me, but it is only $73.50 all up. And the thing here, it just reminds you that there are still true collectors or true team collectors in the game. This, I would never buy this card myself, but it, it makes sense if you're a big Collingwood supporter and you want to put together team sets or anything like that. You've got a very rare card here. So when you put together a very highly supported team and a very rare card, then you can get prices like this, even for cards that are quite unimportant. And I think it is a good reminder that everyone collects differently and there are some people still going after these cards that other people would deem worthless. Number nine on the list, by the way, this list is for the week ending September 19th. I should have said that before, but number nine is Hugh McCluggage's gold signature from 2016 Future Force. Unlike the last card, this card still has a bit of potential. Hugh McCluggage is still playing and, and playing at a high level and has an opportunity to take his game higher in the in the years to come. So at $80 for a rookie signature of his, personally I wouldn't be going into this, but it's not a horrible buy by any means. And just of note is that he also has a platinum signature from that set. So this one's out of 200 um, and the platinum's lower numbered. So this isn't his best card in that set. That would go for much higher in my opinion. Okay, so number eight on the list, we've got Alex Rance's rookie card from 2008 Classic. This is a funny one because I just talked about it in my last video. I think it's a great card and I actually wonder if any of the viewers bought this card. I went for $80.50, which I bought mine a couple weeks ago, well, probably a month before that actually for 55. I had an eBay voucher, so it cost me $50 all up. So there's a bit of a jump right there straight away and that's good to see for me because I'm holding on to the card uh, long term. Like I said last video, this card has a population of 400, that is there were 400 made, but due to the redemption process, the actual population that made it outside of select is more likely around 100 in my opinion. On to number 7 and we've got Dustin Martin's 2010 Champions Draft Rookie card and this went for $110.87 including shipping. I think this is a reasonable price, but it did kind of catch me off guard because I bought one recently again, which was at $91 all up uh, from memory around there. So this sale was about $20 higher all up, which is not out of the ordinary that obviously there's a small swing that happens in every card sale, depending on what eyeballs are on, on the sale at that time. But it is good to see that his market is still strong, even though he has his injury troubles and there's retirement talks and all, all, all that uncertainty that's coming with Dusty at the moment that people are still really interested in his cards. Number six, we've got Zach Merritt's DPS from 2014 Honours 1. This is a cool card to see because Zach Merritt is a great player. I think he came top 10 Brownlow, so he's performing at a really high level and it's easy to forget about him in that draft class because you've got Bont and the Crips alongside him. So this might put him into the shadows a bit, but he's probably the third best player of that draft class, at least the draft pick signature class. Uh, James Sisley's probably up there as well, but at $160 all up, I think this is a very reasonable sale and something that could actually go up in the future, uh, depending on how he performs. Number five on the list, we've got Trent Cotchin's gold draft pick signature from 2008 Classic. 2008 Classic had some great rookies in that class, 
and trend conscience obviously one of them a brownlow medalist although not a uh, not in the usual way and uh, definitely a club champion and club captain premiership player so it's not a huge surprise that this card went for 199 dollars here now this is not the platinum signature this is the gold signature out of 400 so personally i think this is quite high uh, at 199 dollars i mean dangerfield's equivalent goes for about 100 so Cochin's being double and being a much worse player, in my opinion, uh, doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but the risk, Richmond premium is a real thing, so that probably uh, makes up for that difference. In number four, we've got Will Day's DPS from 2020 Dominance, and this is really the first super recent player on this list, and his card sold for $275. Now, personally, I can't say much about Will Day. I haven't watched a huge amount of footy this season, and especially uh, Hawthorne games. So I can't really mention on his on his playing level. What I can say is that he's not a huge name in the in the media or just in the AFL circles. And I think he plays defense, if I'm not wrong. So usually those cards aren't really high in value. You see earlier, Alex Rance's card's only $80, and he's probably the best one of the best defenders of all time. So at $275, I would say this is very speculative. But once again, I think this is probably a strong collector who's bought this. I don't think someone's bought this thinking it's going to boom in value. I think it's someone who just is an avid Hawk supporter and just wants this card, which you can't say that's bad, but that's great to see. That's exactly what you want in the hobby. Moving on to the top three, we've got three huge cards that sold this week. I didn't plan that way. I actually planned to do this video uh, no matter what, and I'm sure there'll be weeks where there'll be hardly any sales and we'll be looking at 10 Sean Ruslings or something. But in third spot this week, we've got Patrick Cripps's draft pick signature from 2014 Select Honours 1. And after his Brownlow win last night, this card is just going to boom. Even without the Brownlow, he just put in a huge effort this season and he's so important to Carlton. And he's just such a big figure in the AFL world, nothing that would have helped his voting. Like you look at someone like Took Miller, he doesn't get as much coverage, he's not as much of a flashy player, but Cripps, you just can't miss him on the field. He has that kind of game style. And I've talked about this card a bit on the channel before. I think it's super important because it's his only big rookie card. I mean, he's got the All-Australian um, parallel from 2013 Future Force, which I have, and it's like a $10, $20 card at the max. But this is the only big Cripps card and his only draft signature or rookie signature like Bont's got the 2013 Future Force signatures so that means Bont's collector base will be split between the two whereas everyone's going to be looking at this Cripps DPS and I'd say Carlton fans probably are willing to pay a lot more than Bulldogs fans so this card the, the sky's really the limit depending on how the rest of his career goes but even if he does nothing he's really etched into the top players of this generation in my opinion and I kicked him out of my top 10 best footy cards list this year, but he might make a comeback next year if this trend keeps going. Number two, one of my favorite cards, the Dustin Martin Platinum Draft Pick from 2010 Prestige. This one went for $668.55. I didn't mention the Crips, but I would have put it on screen. That was $456.95. But yeah, the Platinum Draft Pick nearly hitting that $700 mark. That's very large. It's not surprising. I, I think I had it valued at about 750 to start the year. And considering everything that's happened with him during the year, 670 is a very reasonable price for it. It's a card I really want to pick up, but I just can't justify spending this kind of money, the $670 price tag. But I don't think it's a horrible investment or, or purchase. Despite his DPS being his high selling uh, rookie card, this card is actually his rarest rookie card, so it has a very important place in his uh, collecting world. And with that, I'm going to go straight into number one, which is Dustin Martin again, this time his draft pick signature from 2010 Prestige. This card sold for $855.55, including postage. To be honest, this is actually a low sale. This is the lowest sale I've seen for at least six to 12 months, I think. And there was actually an eBay coupon going around, so with that, that probably would have made it about 800 to $810, which for me, that's actually quite low. That's almost a price I'm buying it for, so, and I'm quite cheap with my purchases. To be fair, a few have hit eBay recently, 
So it might just be a case of a bunch coming out at the same time, which gives that kind of bias fatigue and lessens the uh, buying base of that card for that time period. But even then, $860 is a lot of money to spend on a footy card. So that's my number one. I've got a couple of closing comments for this list. Number one, this make, list makes me think, why are sealed old boxes so cheap still? It just blows my mind. I mean, you can get 2014 Honors 1, which has Crips, Bond and Zach Merritt, which is also on this list. You can buy it for $270, like shipped on eBay. And the fact that that's going for 270 and the new Optimum will be probably be going for five, 600. It just doesn't compute in my brain because there's so many just cool cards and important cards in these older releases. And this goes the same for 2010 Prestige, you know, 2008 Classic, even 2010 Champions and um, those kind of releases shown in this video. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully I'll be able to tune up this process over the coming weeks, try and make it a bit smoother with this rolling series. But other than that, Optimum's out, so I'll be doing a video on that. I'll probably be doing an end of season slash grand final video. I know I got my prediction wildly wrong with Melbourne and it looks like Geelong might be the winner actually, but I don't want to make any predictions on that because I know how it goes. So lots of videos in the works and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.